Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm bringing you my diary entry for the week of January 1st through the 7th. Today is Saturday, January 7th. So, this first week of January has been kind of slow going for me. Um, on the reading front, on the knitting front, and yeah, it's just kind of been slow but stressful at the same time as far as work goes. So, yeah, it's just been kind of a weird week. Um, I really enjoyed the weather. It's been pretty rainy over the last few days. Um, the rain has let up, which kind of makes me sad. If you don't know me, <laughs> I love the rain. It is the ambiance and weather that just puts me in my happy place. And so I'm happiest when it's dark and overcast and raining. Um, and I'm not happy when it's sunny or hot. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a unique one, but yeah. So as far as like weather and stuff, it was really nice. Loved the rain. We got quite a bit of it. Um, it was pretty cold, but yeah. Other than that, it's been a pretty slow week just getting into the year. Work still though has been stressful and some strange things were going on at work too. So yeah, haven't started off the year great. Um, worked more hours than I should have again, which is kind of always like my thing that I want to stop doing at the beginning of the year, but it just never happens, you know? And even if it does, it doesn't keep up for very long. So I'm really bad at that. I need to work on it because I need to get my stress level down. So anyway, <laughs> as far as reading goes, I did finish two things. Um, and so, yeah, let me tell you about those things. I'm in the middle of a couple of other things, so I'll tell you about those as well. Then there'll be a small book haul. Um, there'll be a little bit of knitting and a little bit of TV show chat. So let's get started. As far as what I finished this week, I finished volume one of Yoamushi Petal. This is by Wataru Watanabe, published by Yen Press, rated teen. So this series follows uh, our main character here on the cover. His name is Onoda, and he is an otaku. And he's starting high school and is super excited to join an anime club because he just wants to chat with other people about his passions. And he goes to school the first day and is super excited and finds out that the anime club has been disbanded because there's not enough members. So he really wants to try to find members so that he can reopen the anime club. But while he was on his way to school, he decided to go up the rear entrance of the school, which has a really steep hill. And he was spotted by another classmate who is planning to join the bicycle club. He is also at high school for the first time. And he's like, you know, it's, it's got to be a fluke. You know, he's going up this back rear entrance on what they call a mama bike or a mommy bike, which is, you know, your typical bike that has a basket in the front type thing. It's not a racing bicycle. He's just happily pedaling along singing and, you know, he can't that can't be what he's doing, right? Because it takes a lot of stamina and energy to pedal, pedal up a steep slope like that. So he decides to challenge Onoda to a race and basically bets that if Onoda wins, he will join the anime club. So that gives Onoda incentive to participate in this race. And it gives Imaizumi, who is his other classmate, a chance to see if Onoda actually has the ability to bike up this slope. And so that eventually leads to Onoda finding a passion for biking and then joining the bicycle club at the high school and then them working their way towards inter high. And so I really enjoy the story. I've watched both however many. I've watched all of the anime seasons that have come out so far, besides the most recent one. We have not yet watched the most recent one, but we have watched the other seasons several times. In fact, we just finished a rewatch of the first two seasons, I think. 
last year, and we've started on the third. Um, really enjoy it. It's just such a nice, heartwarming story. The bicycle racing scenes are super interesting. I've never really been into bike riding until I've watched this anime. And then when we had watched this anime, the Rio Olympics was on that year. And so we actually watched the bicycle racing parts of the Olympics that year because we found this series so interesting. So yeah, really enjoyed the read of this. I will have to say though that the art style is very, very different. It is something that I had noticed when we first started collecting the manga, that the art style was very different from the anime. Um, and even more so as I read through this volume, it was almost difficult for me to figure out some of the characters, just seeing like little sketches of them early on because they look so different from their animated selves. So I am having a little bit of an adjustment uh, issue with recognizing characters based on how they're illustrated in the manga, but the manga is really interesting to me. It's still the same story that I've seen, but there are other scenes within this manga that were not animated. So that helps keep my interest as well, even though this is already a story that I really enjoy. Having those little bits and pieces that are different, even though they weren't like nice scenes, I would say. So I can understand why they were excluded from the anime. Um, but having those little extras is always great to help keep my interest when reading a series that I've already seen animated. So I'm really, really enjoying this series um, read of the manga, and I'll definitely be continuing this this year. So I ended up giving this one four stars, I think. Nope, I actually gave this one five stars on Goodreads. It's probably more like a 4.5, just because the animation style in this manga is not really jiving with me. And truth be told, if I read this before I watched it, I may be hesitant to continue. Just because I had such a difficult time with the anime, the, the like drawing style. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You know, I know there's going to be a lot more in the series that has to do with racing. And so I'm curious to see what I think of those scenes um, and how that's played out but yeah really really enjoyed this definitely recommend this series if you haven't experienced it at all um, in either format because it's a really really heartwarming story and I enjoyed it so that's the first thing I finished in the month of January and then the second thing I finished was the Christmas murder game this is a standalone novel by Alexandra Benedict, I think. Um, this is one that I started at the end of December just because I wanted to read something else that was kind of festive before the festive season was over and I didn't finish it until January. This is a, I think you would call it a closed circle mystery. So it follows a woman whose family owns an estate and every year they play what's called the Christmas murder game. And it's basically a game that happens over the 12 days of Christmas and each day they get some sort of riddle and they have to figure out the riddle and find something. I'm not sure if it like worked out the same in all the years before but our character that we're following, she has not been home for quite a while. Um, when she was younger, she used to live at the estate until her mother committed suicide and she was the one to find the body. Um, obviously very traumatic for her. She never believed that her mother committed suicide, but everybody else said that she did so she has not been home for a while she gets a letter in the mail uh, from her aunt 
and the aunt basically says, if you're reading this letter, that means that I'm dead. Um, but I need you to come home this year and participate in the Christmas murder game. And if you do, you will find out exactly who killed your mother. And so this piques our, our main character's interest, and she goes home and participates in the Christmas murder game. Now, obviously, there are a lot of people um, interested in the game this year because the estate is up on the line. So even though our main character is the heir to the estate, she doesn't have any interest in it. And so in order to participate in the game, she needs to sign away her rights to the estate so that it can be competed for. So she does that. And then this year it's a series of sonnets and they need to find the clues and the sonnets to find the keys. So there are 12 keys, 12 sonnets, and so they start this game. And then slowly people start dying. So it kind of has that, and then there were none feel a little bit. But yeah, it basically follows our main character. I think her name is Lily. Um, going through these games, 12 days of Christmas, um, to find out who murdered her mother. So I listened to this one entirely on audiobook. I borrowed a copy of it from my library through Hoopla, and it was kind of just okay for me. I had a hard time connecting with our main character. There are just some things that she did that I didn't quite jive with. Her voice through the narration is just kind of blah. Um, she doesn't really get excited about stuff. She doesn't really, I don't know, her personality didn't just, it didn't really come out. She just seemed like a real laid back character um, with not much excitement in her. So it was kind of hard for me to connect uh, with her. There was one particular character in her family when she gets to this state to play the game that just was the most irritating person ever. And it was almost to the point where I had to stop listening because this person was just the rudest, most terrible person in what she said, how she said things, how she addressed people. And I just mm, did not like her at all. But yeah, it was an okay mystery. I kind of figured out things pretty early, um, or at least some of it. I didn't figure it out, figure out all of it. So I was still left with a surprise at the end. But yeah, this was just okay for me. I ended up giving this one three stars, which basically means it was okay. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it was enjoyable enough. Um, so, yeah, it was all right. Not, not the best. Like, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more edge of the seat type of suspense, which is not what I got with this. Like, everything was just kind of laid back and not really suspenseful. There was no real surprises. Um, it was just okay. So... Those are my first two reads of the year as far as what I am currently reading. I am going back to Heaven Officials Blessing Volume 1 by MXTX. This is published by Seven Seas, rated 17 plus. This is just okay for me. I don't know that I've read all that much. Like, I've just reached the next chapter from where I left off at the end of November. I'm on page 223. Um, I just finished chapter 7. So, just to recap, this story is about a prince 
who ascends to what they what do they call it godhood um, three times and each time he ascends he falls back down and then he ascends and falls back down he ascends and now he's on his third time falling back down and he kind of gets caught up in this mystery and that's pretty much all I'm going to say because it doesn't seem to follow what's on the summary on the back here. He has already gotten pulled into one mystery and now he's just kind of not really doing much. <laughs> I feel like there's some other things going on and he's got pulled into a few other things, but they don't seem to connect to the mystery that we've found him in in the beginning quarter of this book or beginning third. So now I'm really confused. I feel like this first installment is just bouncing around too much for me. If we had just like gone through, hit the mystery part and gone into him trying to find out what's going on with that, I would probably be more interested in the story than I am right now. Right now, he it's not really researching what's going on with this mystery. Like, they figured out the cause of it, but they still need to do something with that. Like, they figured out who's killing people, but they need to do something with it, and it doesn't seem like he's moving on that at all. So I don't know what's going on. Like, he's stumbled across... An, another uh, an adolescent or a teen or something and now he's traveling with them um, he's now being set off where I am on another mission and I'm like does this connect to the other one at all like what are we doing with the other one so I'm very very confused <sighs> I, I don't know if this is just because it's the first in the series that we're bouncing around so much and trying to give like an overall view of what's going on with this character or if this is just how it's going to be for the entire series because if this is how it's going to be for the remaining installments in this series I don't think I'm going to want to stay with this it's too it's too confusing <laughs> I don't I, it's like I don't see the lines connecting we're like, we have a line, we've connected and then it stops. And then we start another line and it connects and then it stops. And then we connect another line and we connect and it stops. And it's just like, are these three things going to connect together? Like, what's going on? I do not understand. I'm very, very confused. I can only read about five or six pages before it puts me to sleep every night. So, I don't know. I really, really want to give this first installment a shot. Because I hear so many great things about it. But is it because I am mostly a mystery reader that this is not hitting me the way that it's hitting other people who may predominantly read romance novels? Like, I know there's a romance coming up in here. Where Where is it? Like, I, I don't even see that. So, I don't know. I'm very, very confused. So... I am slowly at a snail's place moving along with this. It's, uh, if I had to rate it right now, it's probably between a 2.5 and a 3, if I'm honest. I just don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't want to give up because the mystery at the beginning portion of this book interests me. I have interest in how that's all going to wrap up. But things that have happened since then have not interested me. And I think it's because they don't connect back to that case. So, yeah. I'm chugging along. I'm just going to take it as it comes. If it takes me a month to finish this book, it takes me a month. But, you know, it is what it is. And so I'll need to reevaluate after I finish the first installment because things may change. I'm hoping we come back around to that first mystery like I said um, but as of right now I'm just kind of meh on this story. So yeah I'm currently reading that. I'm also rereading 
Dark Fever, which is the first book in the Fever series by Karen Marie Moning. I am doing this reread, participating in my friend Jenea over at Live a Thousand Lives' read along of the Fever series. So the Fever series is one of her favorite series and she decided to do a read along for it this year. And I'm super excited because I remember enjoying Dark Fever a lot. And I really wanted to continue, but for whatever reason, didn't. I'm pretty sure my mom read about four or five of the books in this series. And from what I understand from what I've heard from Jenea is that the first five books in this series follow our characters in Dark Fever. And so I started my reread of Dark Fever this week. I decided to try out the audiobook uh, because I was in need of an audiobook after finishing the Christmas murder game. And so, yeah, this is my lunchtime audiobook. I've only listened to it for an hour or so. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue listening to it. So we basically follow a woman named Michaela. She's in her early 20s and she's living at home. She's going to college. I think she's in Georgia. Her parents are on a month-long island hopping vacation for their anniversary and her older sister is in Ireland on a study abroad program. And she's just living her best life. She is tanning on the side of their pool at their house. You know, she's just living it up alone in her house since it's empty now with her parents being away and her sister away until she gets a phone call saying that her sister's been murdered and that kind of flips everything in her life around and so she is constantly trying to find out if the Ireland police have any leads or what they're doing and then three weeks after her sister's been murdered the Ireland police basically say this is a cold case they don't have any leads and to her family's dismay, she packs up and leaves for Ireland to try to figure out what has happened to her sister. And early on, she figures out that her sister, who is somebody that, you know, always conf she could always confide in with and her sister always confided in her, they never kept secrets from each other until... She discovers that, yeah, her sister's been keeping secrets from her um, and then starts to find little clues and things that lead her to meet somebody named Jericho and things that she didn't know ever really existed do actually exist. And I think that's all I'll say right now. So... Like I said, this is a reread for me. I really enjoyed it when I read it the first time. In fact, I can still distinctly remember the day that I picked this up because I had picked it up to read at work because our power went out. And this happened to be one of the books that I had downloaded to my Kindle app on my phone. And so while we were waiting for the power to come back on at work, I decided to spend the time reading and I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much that I don't know why I didn't continue, but I've always wanted to go back and continue it. And I thought, you know, Jenea's read along would be the perfect time to do so. So I decided to try it in the audiobook, and I do not like the audiobook. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so basically, our main character, Michaela, she sounds like the TV version of Suki Stackhouse to me. Like the tone of voice, the way the accent is done, that's all I see in my head is Suki Stackhouse. In including the fact that our main character in the book is um, described as someone who has blonde hair. And in the Suki Stackhouse TV show, or True Blood, um, she has blonde hair. So anytime our main character is talking, now I only see Suki Stackhouse in my, in my head. And so it's like really throwing me off. So that's not how I how I pictured Michaela the first time. I'm sure because I didn't even know 
uh, about True Blood at the time. Um, I don't think. And even if I did, I wasn't really familiar with it besides, you know, the the normal picture you see of the two lips on the um, TV show thumbnail type thing. So when I read this, it was back in 2010. It's quite a while ago. Uh, but yeah, she sounds like Suki, and so now every time she speaks, that's who I see talking. And it's really confusing me. Also, our male character Jericho sounds like he's 50 or 60 years old, and that's not working for me either. Because I don't believe that he's that old in looks. I don't remember a lot, but I don't want to say anything else because I feel like it would be spoilery, but yeah, both of those things are not working for me. So I may have to go back to reading that one physically, um, but we'll see. I'm only about 15% into the book at the moment. Um, it's just okay. But then if I stop listening to the audiobook, then I'm like, what am I going to listen to in its place? Because I like to listen to an audiobook during my lunch break. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but that's where I am with my reading at the moment. Um, let's get into the mini book haul, uh, since we're talking about books at the moment. So my mom um, gave me a late Christmas present, and she actually ended up picking up the entirety of the Witchcraft series by Julia Blackwell for me. So I now have the entire series. I had the first one. But she couldn't remember if I did. And the one I have is actually a secondhand book. So this is a brand new copy. Um, there is a mixture of new and used books in this stack because some of the books are unavailable to purchase at the moment. And so, yeah, I have secondhand spirits. I believe this is in order. So secondhand spirits is the first one. Uh, a cast off coven is the second. Hexes and Hemlines, In a Witch's Wardrobe, Tarnished and Torn, A Vision in Velvet, Spellcasting in Silk, A Toxic Trousseau, A Magical Match, Bewitched and Betrothed, and synchronized sorcery. So I have read all of these already. So it is a series that I really, really enjoy. It follows a woman named Lily Ivory and she is a witch. She runs a business in San Francisco that specializes in vintage um, clothing. And so she buys a lot of the clothing secondhand from estate sales, things like that, and then sells them in her store. And then she also has some employees who are also witches, and um, especially a woman named Bronwyn who sells herbs and things like that. And it's just a really, really enjoyable series. They don't really do like witchcraft that you'd normally think of with witches where you know, they dress in black, they wear black pointy hats. It's more, maybe more modern witchcraft. Um, you do see Lily casting spells and during doing rituals and things like that in the books. Um, and there's always a mystery element that has to do with something supernatural. So like for instance, in the first book, she's dealing with La Llorona. I I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the female spirit who cries out for her children. Um, would you call that a myth or a legend? So in this one, a client of hers is murdered and then some children start going missing and they figure out it's La Llorona. And so, yeah, it's always kind of something like that. I would classify these as cozy mysteries just because Lily is not an investigator. Um, she is a vintage clothing store owner and a witch trying to 
figure out these these mysteries. Um, there is a police detective that becomes a regular character in the series, but unlike most cozy mysteries, she does not get involved with the police detective, but they do become fast friends. And so I really, really enjoy the series. I do not know if any more of these are coming out. Last I checked on Goodreads, there wasn't another installment left. I'm hoping that there will be more, but we'll have to see. I know Julia Blackwell is still writing two of her other series, the uh, Home Renovation series, which I really need to get more into. I've only read the first one, and the um, Paris Key series, which I think is more on the contemporary side as opposed to mystery. Uh, but yes, really enjoy the series. If you like um, supernatural type mysteries and cozy mysteries, I definitely recommend you check that one out. But I'm so glad to have the whole set of these now. So I really want to start rereading more in 2023. Um, I've been wanting to reread the uh, Victoria Laurie Ghost Hunter series for a while now. And I've just felt so restricted with what I have put on myself as far as reading and getting involved in too many readathons and things like that, which really restricts my reading because you need to read to the prompts and things. And, you know, with my TBR game, I've just felt really not able to do that. And so I definitely am stepping back in 2023, I'm not going to be participating in as many readathons. Yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes for me because I've just felt really restricted as to what I put on myself and I just don't want to have any restrictions. I want to be able to read what I want to read and so that's why I've made the changes to my TBR game or the change to the TBR game that I did. Um, Especially because last year I had the worst reading slump of what I think in my life has been. Uh, it was just really bad. I need to allow myself to stop reading things that I'm just not interested in and not feel bad about not finishing things. I mean, even with this one, I'm having a really hard time, like... Part of me says you should just like let it go and other parts of me are like, no, you know, stick it out because I'm not hating it, but I'm not really enjoying it either. So, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Like if I'm not hating it, then I shouldn't DNF. That's what my mind kind of tells me. But then the other half of my mind says, no, it's taking you too long. You're you're only reading a few pages here and there, you know, you should just stop reading it. So I'm having, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> and it's just the beginning of the year, like it's a fresh slate. I shouldn't be having these issues, but that's where I am right now. So yeah, I definitely want to do more rereads. And I might even reread this one this year, we'll have to see. Yeah, this far, that's all of the book content that I have at the moment. Uh, let's get into some knitting. So, Advent Project. Uh, this is my Advent from Pineapple Yarns um, that I am finally working up. That's a 2018 Advent calendar. And so I haven't done very much. I think I told you that when I was done with the color that I was working on that I would probably split for the sleeves. Uh, I didn't. Um, I decided that I wanted a little bit more in the yoke to give me some relaxed fit uh, from the neckline to the underarm. And so I'm doing one more color section. I did actually put in a a marker so that I could show you how much I've done, which is not a lot. Um, so I was here the last time I talked to you. And so I've done about an inch, I would say, maybe a little less. 
but that is where I'm at currently. This is day six. And it's kind of like this highlighter yellow, brown, and white um, color in the skein. It kind of looks like this. And so, yeah, I'm going to measure again after I put in this color and see. Because I kind of don't want to split for the sleeves in the middle of a color because that would mean I'd have to, like, do just a partial um, stripe on the sleeve after I've split it and I just don't want it to be that finicky but I'm still very happy with this we've been watching uh, more of our American TV shows because they've all come back now from uh, the winter break and I've just got ends all over the place uh, so I have been weaving in my ends as I go so that is helping, um, but my cord is kind of small, so I think this is going to be okay. It seems like it will be fine. It seems like it. I mean, yeah, I think this will be fine. Might be a little bit more snug than I'm used to, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Pretty happy with how this is looking so far. And um, yeah, so this is where I am with that right now. Um, just chugging along. Like I said, we've been watching our American TV shows. We caught up with uh, SWAT yesterday, FBI, the three FBI's, International, Most Wanted, and the regular FBI. We watched the first episode of Will Trent, which is based on the series of novels by Karen Slaughter. My friend Janie from Bookworm's Buddy, is that is one of her favorite series. From the time that I started watching BookTube, I remember Janie talking about Will Trent and how much she loved that series. And so I definitely had to check out the series when it came on TV. And so far, so good. Very interesting. Lots of familiar faces in the cast. I do have the first book in that series somewhere on my shelves. And I think my mom might be interested in reading it as well. So I may check that out finally. I've always said that, oh, that sounds interesting. I should check it out because Janie keeps talking about it and I've just never done it. So... I will probably try to do that this year as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I've done this week. So overall, not too bad. I'm just having some like wishy-washiness already at the beginning of the year. Like I didn't know what I wanted to start reading at the beginning of the year, even though I had my selections for my TBR game. I always felt that I should go back to this because it's one that I already had on the go but my heart was like no I want to start something else but I went against that and I went back to this book and now I'm just like I don't know what to do <laughs> so not starting off the year really great but it's going so yeah that's pretty much all that I've done this week. So as far as my videos go, like I said before, everything's going to be pushed back. I just need a lot more time to film, but at the same time, I feel like because I am only able to film one day of the week, that that day I'm just filming all day long and I don't want to feel like that this year. So I'm going to take things a lot slower this year. You're not going to see my normal videos come out on the weeks that they normally come out. Um, so for example, I normally try to have my TBR video out at the end of the month prior and obviously that hasn't been happening in the last two months. Um, my end of the month reading reflections, I like to try to have that out 
in the first weekend of the month, and that's not happening. <laughs> um, my manga haul for the previous month is usually out the first, the second Monday of the month, and that's not happening this this month. Um, plus, I do want to do my normal like end of year reading reflections to like go through the spreadsheet and talk to you about how my stats ended up for the end of the year. But I can't do that because I fell off the wagon and stopped recording on my spreadsheet for the last like three months of the year. So I'm trying to finish that up so that I can do that video. Um, I've got a tag video I still need to do that I <laughs> can't find answers for. Like no matter how hard I think on it, I do not have answers for several of the questions on that tag. And so I really need to try to see if I can find some answers to that. I just, I've been thinking about it for months. <laughs> and I told um, Hope, the person who tagged me from Jackalope Hope, um, that I would do it. I had to tell Hope, you know, I've been trying to figure out these answers and I just can't. And so I really, really want to do that this month. But yeah, everything's just pushed back. Everything, everything. But you know... It'll come out as it comes out, and I just I just need extra time. So that's like kind of my mantra for this year. Just do them as you can. I don't want to stress out. I don't want to overwork myself. And things will just get done as they get done. So, yes, less stress. That's like the most important thing for me in 2023. So let me know down in the comments below how your first week of the year went. Have you finished anything this week? Did you start the year on a high note or a low note as far as your reading goes? Did you start a new book at the beginning of the year or did you just carry one over from the end of the year? I'd really love to know that as well. If nothing else, you'd just like to let me know that you were here. If you could leave me some kind of sea creature or a narwhal if there is one, I'm still not sure. <laughs> um, but if there is a narwhal, if not, any kind of sea creature will do. It would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out and that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smiley always. Bye.